Hi, folks. Welcome to the Mike Lopez Show. I'm your host, AC Mike. We'll bring you all things Atlantic City, politics, sports, dining, entertainment, and so much more. Our first guest tonight is Gary Hill, executive director of the MBCA and co-founder and president of Schultz Hill Foundation. Next up, Stephanie Ryan and Quinn Scholl, both of Weiss, Baron, Ryan, and acting and casting. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Our first guest is Gary Hill, the executive director of the Metropolitan Business Citizens Association and co-founder and president of the Schultz Hill Foundation. Gary, welcome to the show. Hey, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. Great. Thank you so much for coming on out here. Listen, that's a mouthful, so we're going to say MBCA. That's right. Is that okay? So, Gary, uh, we go back a little ways, get to know each other, Atlantic City, and what you've done for the city and your foundation is beyond, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's let the viewers know a little bit about yourself and, and how did you wind up here in Atlantic City? <laughs> yeah, but that's a good, that's a good story, you're right. Um, I'm here 32 years now in Atlantic City. I have a master's degree in education. I graduated from Kutztown University in Pennsylvania, but I decided to kind of go away from that a little bit and do some marketing and some business work. So I came to Atlantic City and I started to work in the club business and I did public relations, press, private parties. And so that got me set for my real job, which is executive director of the MBCA, because that includes organizing, marketing, publicity, raising money. So all of my past experiences, I think, kind of get me to my, my job that I'm doing now and getting paid for. So, and that's, uh, I've seen this guy at work, folks, listen, it's like no other. But now, this is a little off script now, because you said the clubs and stuff like that. Loved it. Listen, I'm 57, I'm dating myself, folks, but as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, even a 40 or whatnot, some of those clubs that you and yeah. John, you guys ran, yeah. were incredible. Yeah. If you don't mind, just touch on some of them, because we have time for just, sure. you don't have to go in depth. A lot, lot of history with Yeah, that, oh my right? gosh. We um, owned, operated, and um, really kind of made an impact on Atlantic City's footprint in the entertainment business for many right. years. We had a um, bar called the Brass Rail on Mount Vernon Avenue in Atlantic City. Studio Six, which was a nightclub. With, we used to be called a disco, right. now it's a nightclub. Yeah. And we also on one of the biggest um, clubs called Club True on Mount Vernon, where it kind of put a little bit of everything together to make a great nightlife experience. We were one of the first clubs in the city of Atlantic City that stayed open into the wee hours of the morning, called the After Club. And um, very successful, lots of fun, lots of work. Uh, we employed almost 100 people at that time. A lot of construction, a lot of projects, a lot of great people. We did a lot of charity work in the clubs. We did a lot of fundraising in the clubs. But we also had a lot of fun. And it was a good way to earn a living and to kind of make a, a footprint in the entertainment business in Atlantic City. Pre-casino clubs. Pre-casino. Pre-casino clubs. That's what I was going to say because, uh, again, I remember going as a... As a in my teens, when I restarted, things were a little different back then. And then into my 20s, the clubs were phenomenal, lots of fun, yeah. people from all over, I could say the country. I mean, because Atlantic City is one of those 25 to 30 million a year yeah. come to visit. So, But our nightlife was like no other in that little 48 blocks. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, our motto was... Um, our club was where entertainers are entertained. Right. And we would have all the entertainers from the clubs and from the casinos at that time. When they would be done with their shows at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, they could come to us because we had the After Hours Club. Take a little page from Kentucky and the Curve, the 500 Club, and then I see folks taking a page from you guys when you see Boogie Nights and whatnot, Absolutely. what they do. Yeah. So, folks, that would be another show for another time. <laughs> We're going to talk about that because we had a ball on those some Tell us about the MBCA cause and effect, Gary, what, the, what it serves. Well, it's interesting because the MBCA started as the Midtown Business and Citizens Association because it was, it was formed in the Midtown area of Atlantic City, which was called the Dead Zone. Now I'm lucky to say 
we have something called the Orange Loop in the Midtown area. And the Orange Loop is just amazing. And, and the, the two developers that are there um, are, are, are just energetic. They have great vision. They invest a lot of money. So in a way, we started to highlight the Midtown area. And now, 30 some years later, we have a very active Midtown area called the Orange Loop. There was one business that still is there in the Orange Loop or in the Midtown, which was, of course, the famous Irish pub. Mm. And Mrs. Burke, the owner, gave our organization the very first $1,000 to start the organization because she believed in our mission and our goals. And our mission and goals was just to make a better living environment, a better neighborhood, better uh, business environment for people. And um, we had residents that joined us that lived on Ocean Avenue, New York Avenue. We had some businesses, as I mentioned, only 17 at first. We had uh, the Irish Pub and Mamba Mott's restaurant right, wow. and the uh, PNC, which was Commerce, it's PNC now, but it was Commerce Bank. Right, right. And the first casino was Sands Casino that joined us, but we were in Midtown area. And eventually we started getting a very good reputation. We'd have, oh, city leaders come in and we wanted a voice. We wanted a stronger voice from our Midtown area. So as we grew in popularity and membership a little bit, this person would bring somebody, that person would bring somebody. And we were only like 20 people, 25 people, right. a little luncheon maybe. And we grew and grew. And the very first gentleman from outside the Midtown was a name that's probably well known in this area, Mr. Mac Latz of the Knife and Fork. And if anybody knew Mr. Latz, he did not mince words. And he wanted to make sure our organization expanded outside of the Midtown because he was very impressed on what was happening in our organization. And we were getting some things done where he felt other people didn't. So he asked to join us and he brought some other business people from outside the Midtown area, the owner of Doc's. Uh, right. Doc's Oyster House and some others. And so they decided they wanted to join and they'd bring other people. So we had to come up with a decision, our board, very small board at that time. Well, we can't call it Midtown if we're going to be down in Lower Chelsea and down over in Venice Park and right. so forth. So we changed the name to Metropolitan because that's all-encompassing. <laughs> right. Because our organization, Michael, as you know, you're a member as a resident. Right. So we include residents. We include nonprofits. We have 60, 65 nonprofits that belong, which we help support and promote. We have small businesses like Chester's Flowers, like Docks, like um, the Bungalow, okay? Right. Then we have large businesses like South Jersey Industries, Atlanta Care, ACE, uh, and of course all our casinos. So we have an organization that is all encompassing. It's a metro, that's what brings a community together, right. we believe. It. It's not just one segment of a community. It's all the pieces of the community that makes the puzzle complete. And then we hope to have a positive effect as an organization in our community, if it's through business development, if it's through promotion, if it's through charity work, scholarships, which we do, and that makes our organization one of the strongest, I believe, and obviously one of the oldest. We just celebrated 31 years just right. recently, and um, it, it's, a, it's a good group. It's a good civic business organization. It's a fantastic group, and I'm so happy to be part of it. We got about a minute left, unfortunately. We could go for an hour. We just had a, an event, over 800 people. Mm -hmm. You have one coming up in January. Yeah. It's an annual public. event that we sponsor for over 30 years. It's the state of the city of Atlantic City, and the mayor, whoever the mayor is, right. does the state of the city um, and gives a, a format of what's coming up in the new year, plans, progress, problems. Um, and it's great to see. It's going to be at Caesars. It's going to be January 12th. We have a very special guest. Our Lieutenant Governor of New Jersey, Ms. Sheila Oliver, will be there again giving opening remarks by the state. And we'll have Mayor Marty Small Sr. as, of course, our mayor right now, giving the state of the city. So we invite everybody to come out and see what's going on in 23 in AC. That's right, folks. Listen, it's going to be an unbelievable year. We got some to go yet, but what you folks do at the NBCA and Schultz Hill is phenomenal. And I appreciate being part of it and being friends with you, John, and some of the other board members and whatnot. It's opened my eyes to Atlantic City in a different way. And we're definitely going to have you back. We have to. This is way too short. Gary, thank you, thank you so much Thanks. for coming out. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Our next guest is Stephanie Ryan and Quinn Schaul from Weiss, Baron Ryan Acting and Casting. 
Quinn, welcome to the show. Miss Stephanie, welcome to the show. Folks, Thank you. listen, so glad that you're here with us sitting on set here at Stockton University. Before we get into uh, where you're at, and what you're doing, and your beautiful uh, uh, studio that you guys have, and all the uh, different uh, amenities that you give us, so-called actors or whatever, talent or whatever it may be, Stephanie, tell us a little bit and our viewers about yourself, please. So my name is Stephanie. I'm president and CEO of Weast Bear and Ryan Acting Studios and Ryan Casting. We are a third generation uh, business. We've been here in Atlanta County since 1980. Uh, we are the nation's oldest school for on-camera acting. Um, and we have brought many films into the area. We work on the tax credits with the governor's office. Um, we lobby very strongly to bring more businesses into New Jersey, more film industry. And um, like I said, third generation family business, so it, it runs in the blood. My mom used to sing with Elvis, and uh, it just has trickled down from there. We're going to talk a little bit about your mom and, uh, and those tax credits, too, as this interview goes along, but I'm so glad you brought it. Quinn, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so my name is Quinn Chow. I'm a vice president and the other casting director at We Spare and Ryan. Um, this is also my lovely mother here and my mentor, uh, so doing my best to follow in her footsteps and it seems like we're setting Jersey on fire when it comes to the film industry. So it's, it. it's exciting stuff. It really is. Listen, I got to work with the two of you and, and your crew out there uh, uh, when we were uh, in Pleasantville, I guess, the, on the, the uh, pike there. You do a wonderful job. I had kind of uh kind of off script here what we're doing but just came in i remember i think it was about 2011 or 12 and at the time uh mayor guardian atlantic city i was thinking about running for office and he was like you know you need to go get one of these speaker classes and whatnot and that's where i met your lovely mom so tell us a little bit about your mom grandma stephanie would you mind before we go into our uh no not yeah. at all so my mother um grew up during Fra in frankfurt germany during right. world war ii um, and she was Frankfurt's beauty queen. And then she uh, had a job, she was running AFN in Frankfurt, Germany. So when they send the stars over to fight a war, they don't put a gun in their hand and send Elvis to the front line, they send them to the radio stations. So it was my mom, Jim Preston, who became uh, president of Sony, uh, Elvis, and Nick Clooney, George's father, who uh, became engaged to my mother, and he was actually her sponsor to come over to the United States. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, getting to meet her a few years back, a decade or so, uh, she made it so easy for me. Not that I was a, a prize student or anything like that, and then I got to meet you guys. So, you know, a lot of history there. Um, I'd like to touch a little bit before we get into the tax credits and some of the projects you guys have put out there. Just your, the, the, the love, you know, and we'll start with you, Quinn, the love for teaching, number one, and then the acting bug also. So uh, fill us in. Absolutely. So, all right, so starting with teaching, um, it is definitely a blessing to be able to wake up every day and have a job teaching, nonetheless teaching acting. Right. Um, just to be able to, to really be hands-on with people that are, are, are putting themselves up to be exposed and to be judged, you really get to see people's truest side to them. Uh, when the pressure starts. So being able to work with people at their at their truest and get to kind of help them and guide them and watch them succeed and, and become better at their craft, but also become become more confident, right. it's just an amazing thing to be able to do in life. Um, yep. So that's definitely the passion when it comes to teaching. Um, acting is definitely where the heart lies. Uh, we always talk about acting like therapy, because uh, in the real world, you're, you're put in a cookie cutter world where you have to act a certain way, be right. a certain way. If you're upset, don't be upset in public and things. Right. And then once you get up on stage or you get up in front of the camera, which is what we do, you have to be private in public. Um, so it gives you that opportunity to, to scream or to cry or to laugh and love in front of people. Um, and just the, the, the combination between exposure, um, being exposed while you're up there, and then having to have these emotions, it really does just make you grow as a person. So it's, yeah. it's just a beautiful thing. I, I can attest to that. Uh, one of the courses I took with you guys was this, that, you know, whether you're crying or overreacting, I'm like, oh my God, I feel so silly up here. Yeah. But it's acting, it's what you're doing. And when you said that in the first part of uh, your answer, you know, you're, you know, we're scripted so to act a certain way in public and that's not what acting is, so yeah. it really is. Stephanie, to add and piggyback on what Quinn's saying, I mean, with your love and the teaching and the acting. Uh, I, I love it. My first gig was Wonderama. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
That's, so, yeah. <laughs> dating. Wow. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, and I, my mom always drugged me to sets. You know, she, mm. we're, we're all, not only do we teach, but we're working actors as well because we feel like you can't really teach someone something unless you're out there doing the hustle yourself. Right. Right. You know, the industry changes so, so quickly that you really have to stay on top of that. Um, and teaching is just, it's so wonderful. As, as Quinn was saying, you know, you have to, in, in society, you have to look right and act right and speak right, and sit right, or you don't fit in. And it, I feel it really robs you of, of your individuality. Right. You know, the, the truest side of ourselves, we've been conditioned in society to tuck away and it's, it's um, it's very healthy to right. to experience those emotions and let them out yeah. and to share them, and it, it makes for for better people in general. You know, our big goal is just to make a a, a really healthy, well-rounded, respected next generation. Right. You know, with teaching children how to shake hands and look someone in the eye, and to give that confidence of of being able to stand up in front of people and not feel like you're a fish out of water. Right. You know, we're all taught to get up and speak, but we're not taught to give up, get up and and communicate with one right. another. You know, speech giving is is something completely different. But really speaking from the heart and taking what someone else wrote, being able to feel your own emotion in that, and then express that to the camera, it's magical. I love it. I want to know about your location. Our location, we just moved out here in Galloway at the beginning of COVID. Um, so we've been out here for quite a while now. Um, and the location is beautiful. It has tons of parking. We have three working studios, a sound studio, um, two casting rooms, um, mm. and plenty of office space where we can bunk up when we have these films in and spend <laughs> night and day. Right. Um, so it's a beautiful place, honestly. Uh, it's doing us justice. It's set off the road, so it's quiet. Uh, and we absolutely love it. Yep. Yeah. It, the, the address? It's in the Smithville Professional Center, right. which is located at 48 South New York Road, Suite B1 in Galloway, zip is 08205. Quinn, Stephanie, thank you so much for being here today. Listen, stay right where you're at. We're gonna have some more with you. Folks, you also stick around. We'll be right back. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We're with Quinn and Stephanie of Weiss Baron Ryan, acting and casting. Quinn, we were just talking about some of the uh, great events and projects that you were on uh, with uh, Stephanie too. Stephanie, tell us a little bit about that Bruised and uh, Warrior and some of those uh, others that you uh, had going on in the past uh, years. So the first film that I that I was uh, that I flew solo on was Warrior with Nick Nolte. Um, mm -hmm. And we shot that in Atlantic City at Boardwalk Hall. There were all the fight scenes there. That was, it was amazing. It was amazing to be able to put hundreds of, of our local actors to work. And I think that's always been a passion for both Quinn and myself is to take, uh, to take our local community and put them into films. So we did Warrior, Sex in the City, Third Watch, Ocean's Eleven, um, and bruised, as you know, because you were one of our yeah. actors in Bruised. Lots of fun. Yes, and it was with Halle Berry. Uh, yep. We also did 48 Blocks and um, The Atlantic City Story. Um, we work very closely with Heather Kalachi from the Atlantic right. City Film Office, who is just an amazing person, uh, very knowledgeable. We actually also assisted in helping to open the film office for Atlantic City. Um, so lots of really good projects, wonderful city, very helpful. It's, um, it's, it was a lot of fun. Listen, don't tell anybody, folks, but I would have did that Bruce thing for free. They actually <laughs> paid me to be on set for a week and watch these people work. And I literally went to school and I enjoyed it. Uh, immensely, I actually got my sister on set too as an extra. Uh, you guys brought her in now. But Quinn, some of the stuff that uh, uh, Stephanie talked about, some of the projects and whatnot, but tell us a little bit about the tax credits and, and that, you know, how that has affected uh, shooting in New Jersey, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely. So the film tax incentives are, are really like 90% of why the films are coming here to shoot now. Um, so we have one of the largest film tax incentives in the whole country. 
and our country has the biggest film market so in the world. Uh, New Jersey, I think we rank number three right now. Um, so we have uh, over $100 million a year put aside for tax incentives for films that come shoot here. And now I think we're up to a 15-year period in the contract, meaning we have those tax incentives for 15 years. Right. With that, in the past, uh, recently, it has become so exciting because studios like Lionsgate, mm. Netflix, there's a mega studio being built in New Jersey right now. They're all coming here and they're building permanent locations because that tax incentive is going to last for so long. Right. We have had a lot of films these past few years. We have never had studios the way we are having studios and the way in the next couple of years we're going to have studios. So it is going to be a game changer for sure. It is. It's exciting. And when you see a Netflix or, or some of the ones you named coming into town, not just Atlantic City, but the state in general, uh, it, it's, 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 it's uh, truly, you hear the phrase a lot, uh, Quinn, you use the game changer, but that's a game changer in, in the most... Uh, grandest of, uh, of, of, of statutes because one you're putting people to work whether it's the, the talent on front uh, what you folks do and then the technicians and whatnot so I don't mean to bounce around a little bit but the ADD's kicking in some of the things that I saw on that set at Bruce um, some of the uh, different employees talk to us about some of that you hear the, the word grip you know, I'm going off script again here, though. But some of that stuff I know, layman like myself, is like, what the hell is that? You know, what is it? But some of the places, because a lot of folks think it's either just acting or teaching. But there's so many other um, avenues you can go when it comes to this type of. Uh, somebody take that from me. There's there's an uh, there's a giant infrastructure that needs to be supported by our state at this point. So. With the films coming in and our tax incentive, 60% of the budget has to be spent in my state or you're not walking away with my tax money, mm. which means employment of our people. Uh, not bringing in actors from New York and Philadelphia and all over the place, the moon, Los right. Angeles. Although we love them. But we love them for sure, but it's like our tax right. money and 60% of their budget other than post has to be spent in our state. Um, so the largely what we're getting from productions that we're casting for is we get the phone call and we'll talk to uh, the directors and the producers, the AD teams, and they'll say, oh my gosh, we've spent our 40% out of state already. Aha. So every single actor you hire has to be a New Jersey resident or we don't qualify. Mm. And that, uh, that was... That was the, uh, the goal for us in, in assisting to help to write the film tax incentive for the state of New Jersey, is to make sure that it was going to be productive for our New Jersey residents, right. uh, as well as, you know, I mean, there's plenty to go around, but right. it really, um, businesses that are hired. So if you shoot in North Jersey, you're entitled to 30% of the tax credit. If you shoot in South Jersey, it's 35. That means businesses that are hired in South Jersey. Because the further you come into the state, the more incentive you should get because we have an ocean on one side right. and we cannot draw people from there. So being a, a, an ocean bordered state, we need that extra incentive to draw more business deeper into the state. And it makes sense that they would get more of an incentive because you're spending more on gas, on tolls, on, uh, you know, on, on all of the expenses. Um, you know, and we wanted to make sure that South Jersey was not overlooked. And you folks had a direct uh, effect on this. I mean, you, with the legislation or whatnot. So I really appreciate it because, again, I've dipped my toe in it. And it's, it is so exciting. And to go to school, I like to say, whether it's at your place or going to school on a set, it is so neat to learn that world. I mean, you know, I'm a correction officer. You know, I, you know, didn't do any of that. A little acting, but it was <laughs> But it's it's unbelievable. So, let let's touch on some of the the classes that you offer some of the folks if they want to come in and find you guys in Galloway. Quinn? Absolutely. So um, so our workshops specialize in on camera acting. And there's a few different uh, variations of that. So uh, what we usually like starting people in is commercial acting. Um, that's where I've gotten my start. That's where mom's gotten her start. Um, it's definitely ha uh, an area that has a lot more opportunity. Um, once people learn the commercial acting and we hook them up with a good agent, we usually like to get them into uh, mostly film work in that way, film and television, right. that takes a lot longer to build your resume, your reel, get exposed and everything. So it's nice to be able to book a few commercials, make your money so you can start laying off of your day job, and then diving into the film, which is usually the people's passion. 
Um, right. Definitely. Right. And that's amazing. He said, uh, the way to get, uh, you know, you have to work your way up to it, uh, whether it's uh, the commercials or, uh, like you said, the uh, films and whatnot. But you, too, and those folks that work in your offices, it could be quite intimidating. But it's, it's a way, I mean, we touched on in the first part of the interview, uh, to get yourself out and open up and expand yourself. Talk, Stephanie, talk. we got a few minutes. The hardest part is always making that first phone call, walking through the door for the first time. Because we as human beings have been, we're so afraid of judgment. Right. You know, and, and it's very intimidating. So to put yourself in front of the camera or, you know, just in front of anyone in general for, do you, to, to be picked, uh, it's a very precarious place for people to be. But what we do is we, we have, it's, we call it the WBR fam. We're a family business. We treat everyone like family. We don't do egos or pretentiousness right. or any of that stuff. That's that has to go somewhere else to, to really learn and be able to properly critique yourself and to be, get into a character. You have to be comfortable and you have to feel safe. And we provide that. With education, the knowledge, the, it, the power that comes with that to really know how to navigate the business properly and to also always always have us to fall back on. We have third generation, fourth generation people coming through the door at this point. And um, I, I just, I, we couldn't be more honored, more blessed and, and, and just happy that we can change so many people's lives, even if you don't want to get into acting. It's for public speaking. Right. You know, we train many politicians. Right. Um, Self-confidence, you know, people who just have that fear of getting up in front of people. No one should be left like that through life, you know? And just to piggyback off that, I can't tell you how many times a day, Mike, we hear the hardest part was making the first phone call yeah. and walking through the door for the first time. Right. Right. It literally is. Because once you come in and you get to meet us and realize everyone's just people, no matter uh, how much experience you have in the right. industry, it just, all the anxiety kind of goes away at that point. It's just making that initial leap is so hard, it seems like. So and there you go. Yeah. Armed with yeah. knowledge on top of that, That's right. and you know your business, you know your craft, and there, it, it, it's just wells of of confidence then that right. come from that empowerment you know? through information and yes. all those sort of things. So, folks, listen, we appreciate you coming on out to the show. We could do this all day long. Uh, we Baron Ryan, acting and casting. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Quinn, Mike. Thank you so much. We'll be uh, having you back for sure. Folks, you stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. Hey, folks. It's our belief here at the Mike Lopez TV show that you, the viewers, and our guests bring the show to life. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us. To learn more about AC Mike, go to acmikenj.com or on Facebook at Mike Lopez, Live, Work, Play, AC Mike, and on Instagram at AC Mike NJ. Remember to live, work, play AC, and I'll see you on the 48th.